Hi, I'm George Pearson. In this Photoshop Elements video, we'll be doing this circular logo overlay on this picture, and more importantly, we'll be putting our text around the circle and reading correctly both on the top and on the bottom. Now, if you like this video, make sure you click that like button. Click on share, and then share this video with your friends on social media. And also, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss it on any videos in the future. And to learn a lot more about Photoshop Elements, take a look at my complete training, and there's a link right down there in the description. Okay, let's get to it. We'll start this project by creating this photo logo here and get our text reading correctly on the top and also reading correctly on the bottom. This takes a special little trick to do this. Okay, we'll start off with a brand new file. I'll just close this one down. So file, new, blank file. And I have this one set at the default Photoshop Elements size with a width of 6, a height of 4 inches, and a resolution of 300. And then just choose OK. There we go. And notice how this comes in floating like this as opposed to just coming in docked like that. The reason for that is that I have my Photoshop Elements set up with floating windows and we'll need that later on in this project. So let's make sure you have that set up. Go up here to Edit, come down to Preferences and General. And here make sure that these two checkboxes are checked. Allow floating documents in expert mode and also enable floating document window docking. With those two checked, we'll be all set. You can then float your documents. Right now we don't need that, but that will come in useful later on. Now we need to find the center of our page. So I'll set that up by, let's bring in our guides and make sure that your snap to is set to guides, layers, and document bounds. And make sure that your rulers are selected like that so the rulers are showing. Then simply grab the left side ruler, pull this in, as you get towards the middle of the page, just kind of slow it down and it should snap right to the center. There it is. There's that center vertical. The same thing with the horizontal ruler. Pull it down and it should snap. There it is, right to the center. So there's our center point for the page. We'll be needing that for a few of the steps here. Let's now put in a circle on this thing. So I'll go over here to the ellipse tool right there. Now yours might show the rectangle tool. That's the default tool. So let's click on that and then come down to the ellipse, which is right here. Set this for circle and from center. And the color can be black, that's fine. And then put your cursor right on the intersection of those two lines from the little crosshair right there. And click and then drag out. Now watch the numbers there on the right hand side and bring that out to about two and a quarter, which is right about there. Just about two and a quarter. Doesn't need to be exact, but about that size is pretty good. Now, if you don't have those numbers, if you're using an earlier version of Photoshop Elements, you can do the same trick by putting a guideline up here at 0.875 and then pulling your circle up to that guideline. To do that, just go up to View, come down to New Guide, and then type in 0.875, and that'll do the same thing for you. Okay, so there's our basic circle. We'll use this as our reference. We'll also be putting our picture inside of this circle. But right now, this is just the reference for the type. Let's put our type on. To do that, go over here to the Type tool. You'll probably be sitting here on the Type Horizontal tool right there. Now I'm using Arial Bold, Color of Black at this point, Size of 18, and I have my text centered. Come over to this option right here. This is the Text on a Shape tool. Click on that one, and go over here to the draw ellipse. Now with this tool you have to draw a new ellipse, but that's fine. We can go ahead and do that. It should follow the same settings that we just set up for the regular ellipse, which means centered and circle. So it should do that just fine. Double check your text. It should still be on this. If you set this up on the text over here, it should still be fine here. But double check. Arial bold, 18 point, and black is fine. Now come right back onto the center of those crosshairs right there, click and drag out, and pull this out so you're a little ways beyond that I have mine at just about 2.4. Again, doesn't need to be exact, but about that is good. And that puts in an ellipse, and then notice I have this little kind of a odd cursor right there. 
as you're right on top of the line, you'll see that. To draw the text on the line, just make sure you see that come right onto the center point and click at that point. I'm going to just put in some text here. Notice how it goes clear around, it just kind of spreads around to both sides because it's centered, but it goes upside down on the bottom half of the circle. We want to have our text right side up on the bottom half of the circle. So let's do that part first. This part is easy to do. The top part of our text, that's easy to do. As you can see, we could have just done that right there. But the bottom part is the tricky part, and that's what we'll take care of first. Just close this down. So here's our line. I'm going to hide the shape up here so it's easier to see this. So this is just our ellipse here for this draw text on a shape. There is that tool. Again, just click right there. Now the bottom line says, there you are. That's our bottom line text. Triple click on the text. That'll select the whole line like that. Now here's the trick. Hold the control key down and then grab that text and pull it straight down. Right down to the bottom like that. You can kind of move it back and forth if you want to. Just pull it straight down and it should pop onto the bottom reading correctly down there. So that's the trick. I'm going to show you that one more time here. Click on the top. Type in there you are. Triple click. Hold the control key down and then pull that straight down and it should pop into the bottom. There it is. And then click on that check mark. Okay, now it's going to be inside of our circle. Now because we put this type on the inside of the circle, it's now in behind our shape, our circle up here. So we need to resize this. So come just outside, right there, just outside of that corner. See that kind of a bent arrow? Click at that point. This then brings up the bounding box for that whole circle. We can now resize that circle. Hold the Alt key down and drag from the corner. This will enlarge that from the center. And bring it out to, oh, about, about there looks pretty good. And choose OK, so that's nice. Now, the type has gotten larger as we did that. Let's go ahead and reset the type size. Back to the Type tool and go to the Type Horizontal tool, upper left-hand corner. That's the default tool. You'll see here that the size has gone up to 20.85. So let's just triple click on that and then go back to 18 point and choose OK. So that's all set in place. Now it's a little bit off center at this point. Let's just double check that. It needs to be rotated, I think, a little bit. Or just push to the left just a touch. Now you can do that easily enough to rotate this. Just click down there come outside and then when you see that you can actually pull that around just a touch to rotate that just a little slight adjustment to improve its position and that looks good okay that takes care of the type on the bottom we can now do the type on the top come back to the background layer back here and then back to the type tool double check the size let's set this at 18. Back to the text on the shape. Double check those. That looks fine. Once again, we'll come into the center right on top of those lines right there. And let's pull out. This time, pull it out so it touches the top of those letters. And then go back up here to the top. Make sure you're on that center line. And when you see that cursor, just click at that point. And I'll go ahead and we'll type in the top text up here. Remember, no matter where you go, there you are. Now, because the outside text is on the that line and the inside text has been moved to so the top of this is on that line, the actual letters are all in the same place, or the same space now around that circle. So that takes care of the text. We can now put our larger circle in here. Make sure you're on the background layer. And then go back here to the ellipse tool. That should still be set at circle and from center. I'm going to change the color here just to this 
CMYK cyan right there. That's fine. And then come right into the center again. Center spot, which is right there. And pull out from there. And pull this out so it's just a little ways beyond your text. Just about like that. And there's that new center. Okay, now at this point we're going to be putting a gradient into this. To do that, let's make a new layer above this circle layer here. There's our new layer. Over to the gradient tool. And it should look like this for you. You should have the light blue to white in here. You can leave the left side as is. That's fine. Go over here to the right side. Click on that little color stop. And over here it says color, click on that, that brings up the color picker. And in here it's just find kind of a nice darker blue. Maybe right around in here someplace. It's a nice deep blue in there. Choose OK. So I have a light blue over here over to a dark blue. I think I'm, I'll go a little bit brighter on this one. Click on that color stop. Let's just double check that. And I'll push that up. Clear to the corner and in just a little bit. Just a bit brighter on that. Choose OK and that looks fine. So there is our gradient. Now come down here outside the bottom right hand corner of the circle about this far out and just pull that straight through the middle the same kind of spot in the upper left hand side there. Now this puts a gradient on the layer and it's above that circle which is exactly right. Now right click on the name of the layer up here. Right click and choose create clipping mask. Now that puts that inside of that circle. Notice a little indent right there. Okay, that takes care of the gradient on that one. We can now change our text to white. So let's go over here. I'm going to reverse these. There you are is at the bottom down here. So I'm going to pull this layer underneath that other layer so it's kind of the same place. The top one is remember and the bottom one is there you are. Let's go back to the type tool and switch this over again to the default type tool right there and then triple click on the text. I sit on the top text here and let's change the color to white Then click outside here someplace to set that in and choose OK. So that takes care of the white at the top. Come down to the there you are. Back to the text tool again triple click. Selects that and let's change that color to white as well and click out here somewhere to set that in and choose OK. So that takes care of the text. We now can set the bevel on this and the shadowing on this. Just kind of finish off that circle. And that's right here on shape two. Go up to layer and layer style and the style settings. In here, we want to do the bevel first. Just check that. If I pull this in, you can see that bevel right there working. I want that in, oh, just a little ways, maybe about like 13 or 15 or so. I'll just type in 15. There we go. And I'll set the angle here to 140. So it's kind of pointing off over here someplace. That gives us the angle this way. So here's our shadowed side. A little bit of a shadowed edge here. Just a little bit of a little highlight up in there. So it's a nice little bevel. Let's put a drop shadow now behind this. Go up to drop shadow. Click on that. Let me pull this out so you can see that drop shadow. There's the drop shadow. I'll leave the size at 7. This is just the softness of the edge of the drop shadow. That's the softness of that edge right there. Leave it at 7. Leave the opacity at 35. And let's put our distance at maybe about 13. You know, I'll just type that in. And choose OK. OK, that finishes that piece of this. We now need to put our picture in the middle. Now for that, we no longer need these guidelines. So we'll go ahead up to view and come down to uncheck guides. Okay, go up here to the top layer, shape one, and I'll open up the picture I'm using for the middle of this. You know, use any picture you want to. And it's right here, edge glow fur hood too. Now I have a link to this picture on the materials page for this video. So you can go there and you can download this picture right from there. And this is from an earlier project that I did where we actually changed the background on this girl, put a little kind of a nice little glow in there. There's also a link for that video and this picture here. Now this is where having that floating window really comes in handy. All I have to do is go up here to the background, drag it over here onto my other file, and it copies that onto that file. It's that easy to bring that in. Okay, let's just pull this down so I can see the corner. There it is. 
and then pull that corner to resize the image. Let's bring this down so it's just a little bit larger than that circle, which is right about like that. And I'll stick her over about here. She's okay. Let's now put her inside the circle. Same trick that we did with that gradient. Click on the name, right click, create clipping mask, puts it inside of the circle. Now you can still move the picture around in here if you want to. And you can still resize a little bit as well. So you have all those options still available once you're inside that circle. Okay, that looks good. Last thing to do now on this is to put that little thin orange line around that circle. And that's done back on the circle itself right here. And that's a layer style. So layer, layer style, style settings. And we'll be doing a stroke for that. Set the position to inside. And then you see there is that stroke right there. That's that stroke effect. Now the size I have mine set at eight, just a little thin line. And then click on the color picker icon right there, brings the color picker up. And notice if I'm over here, I have an eyedropper tool. So I can bring that into my picture and click into the picture and find a color right out of the picture. I think that looks pretty good. Just a, kind of a medium orange right from around the sun. So this color actually is pulled right from the photograph. Then just choose OK and OK again. And that finishes off that little circular photo logo. We now need to put this onto our other picture. To do that, I'm going to be merging all of these layers into one new layer. Before we do that, though, let's hide this background there. Just click on that and hide the background there so we get that transparency in behind there. This checkerboard pattern is just denoting transparency. Okay, go up here to the very top layer and then hold down a special keyboard shortcut. And that's Control, Shift, Alt, and then just tap the E key once. And that merges all of these visible layers up onto this new layer. You can see that if I hide all this stuff, there we go, it's all in that one layer right there. Okay, that's all ready to go. Let's now just pull this out and float this. So I'm doing that floating window trick again here for this step. And I'll bring in my background picture. And I have that one in here right there, hot air balloons. Now again, there's a link to this picture. If you want to use that actually picture, there's a link to this picture on the materials page for this video. Okay, back to our project site over here. Grab that one layer, that's the logo layer. And just drag it over here into this picture and it drops it in just like that as a floating layer. So there it is. Now all you have to do is just resize this to fit. Grab that corner and pull that down until it comes in and fits just where you want that. So right about in here someplace. And choose OK. So there we go. There is your floating logo, your circular logo with the text reading correctly both on the top and on the bottom. And it's floating on your background picture. I'm going to show you one little thing in here on that drop shadow that we did. It's a real little subtle bit. But we had the opacity set at 35. That was the default. So you can see the photograph through that drop shadow right there. Real nice little bit. I'll get put that back to you fill screen. So there you go. That is how to, to do this circular logo and then float it on another picture. Don't forget to take a look at my complete training course for Photoshop Elements. And again, you'll find a link right down there in the description. And also while you're there, don't forget to click on that share button and share this video with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.